Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Highland, Indiana's service of worship on this fourth Sunday of Advent. The fourth Sunday of Advent is a celebration of love. In preparation for today's worship service, I invite you to create your sacred space in whichever way is meaningful for you. If you are participating in our Advent candle lighting, get your artwork ready or get your candles at home set up. In our celebration of love today, we will be learning about Mary, the mother of Jesus, who so fully and completely embodied love for her child, love for the world, and love for us. As we continue to worship physically apart, but spiritually together, let us remember that our God is love, and that it is in the spirit of our God who is love that we worship. So let us worship God. Good morning and welcome to the virtual worship service for First Presbyterian Church in Highland. We're glad that you are with us this morning. Before we start worship, there are a few announcements to share. Uh, just to let everybody know who's been participating in the Wednesday Bring Your Own Bible Study. They will be on hiatus through the end of the year and will regroup in January. So look forward to that and um, virtual fellowship we're trying that and we will have that after worship and we're moving it up to 11:45 so that 
we have time to, to make that shift between worship. And the other announcement to put on your calendar is Christmas Eve, there will be a virtual worship service at 7 p.m. So look out for the link in your email to participate in that and please have your candles ready for the service. And now, listen to the passing of the peace. Christ's peace is with us always, no matter where we may be. And so Christ's peace is with each and every one of us in this moment. Let us take it in and let us really feel it. When we are done with worship today, call someone from the church and greet them and share Christ's peace. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we light four candles to mark the season. Hope, peace, joy, and now love. Paul wrote, if I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. All say, and John wrote, Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love.
we light the candle of love, let us remember God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent the only Son into the world so that we might live through him. This week we will celebrate the birth of that Son. Since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. Let us share the light of love with each other and with the world. All say, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. As we begin worship this morning, please join me in the call to worship. This is adapted from Psalm 89 in the Old Testament. We will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, we will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. We declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David, I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. We declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Then you spoke in a vision to your faithful one and said, I have set the crown on one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found my servant David. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. By hand, my hand shall always remain with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. We declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heaven. You said, he shall cry to me. You are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him the firstborn the highest of the kings of the earth. Forever I will keep my steadfast love for him, and my covenant with him will stand firm. We declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. We worship you, O God. And now I'd like to invite you to join in our first hymn this morning, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Oh, 
as we prepare our hearts and minds for the prayer of confession. Listen to the invitation. In his letter to the Romans, Paul writes that God is able to strengthen us according to the gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ. Together, let us confess how we have fallen short in delivering the good news. Please join me now in the prayer of confession. God, who is love, we confess that we do not always share the light of your love with each other and with the world. We encircle ourselves with those who are close to us and limit our love to them. When we encounter people outside of our circles, we put conditions on the love we have to offer. With our actions and attitudes, we say, we will love you, but first you must change your behavior, your beliefs, or your identity. When we do this, we fail to follow the example of Jesus, who loved all without condition. Forgive us for failing to love fully. Help us to better hear your image of love. In the name of Jesus Christ, the incarnation of love, we pray, amen. Listen now with your hearts the assurance of pardon. Jesus Christ was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. This is the Savior who forgives us. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Let us join our voices now in stating what we believe. This is taken from the Confession of 1967. God's sovereign love is a mystery beyond the reach of humanity's mind. Human thought ascribes to God superlatives of power, wisdom, and goodness. God reveals love in Jesus Christ by showing power in the form of a servant wisdom in the folly of the cross, and goodness in receiving sinful people. The power of God's love in Christ to transform the world discloses that the Redeemer is the Lord and Creator who made all things to serve the purpose of love.
us pray together now the prayer for illumination as we prepare our hearts to hear the scripture. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us in the waiting, the watching, the hoping, the longing, the sorrow, the sighing, and the rejoicing of this season of Advent. Amen. Listen now as we hear the Hebrew Bible lesson. And this is taken from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 7, verses 1 through 14a. Please listen to this. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with us. But the same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one who built me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought the people up from Israel, from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel? saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and I have cut off all your enemies before you, and I will make you a great name like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When the days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you. You shall come forth from your body and I will establish his kingdom. He will build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him and he shall be a son to me. Our epistle lesson this morning is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 16, verses 25 to 27. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. And our Gospel reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. 
The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month of her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here in our homes and in our hearts. Give us your wisdom as we listen for your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, the incarnation of love, we pray. Amen. Today's sermon is entitled Ave Maria. Every so often, I have the distinct blessing of worshiping with my grandma Virginia in the Saturday evening Mass at St. Joseph's Catholic Church in Shelbyville, Indiana. Grandma Virginia is one of those matriarchs with a faith that inspires. She went to religious boarding school when growing up and sailed to Vatican City with her mom as a teenager. I would be shocked if she has ever missed a weekly mass in her life. Needless to say, she was over the moon when this cradle Presbyterian decided to go to a Catholic university and then when I decided to study theology there. Well, when we have our blessed time together going to Saturday evening Mass, she invariably wants to get there a bit early for the praying of the Rosary. And each time, I learn a bit more of that beautiful prayer known in Latin as Ave Maria. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now, I love being a Presbyterian, part of the beautiful Reformed tradition of theology and worship. Clearly, this is so, as I stand here today as a pastor in the Presbyterian Church USA, part of loving a tradition so dearly, though, is recognizing the ways that it can be better. And among those ways are our need to decisively recognize the divine feminine and, relatedly, our need to more fully honor Mary. For Mary is not only blessed amongst women, she is blessed amongst all human beings, period. Let's take a look at today's reading for evidence. 
As an unmarried teenager in Roman-occupied Palestine, she was visited by Gabriel, an angel, a messenger of God. A heavenly being of power, it is unlikely that Gabriel looked anything like the white-robed, feather-winged, haloed pictures we have. I am sure that Gabriel was awesome and terrifying to behold. When this heavenly being of power appeared in the flesh and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Young Mary was much perplexed. She didn't shrink away in fear as most of us would at the sight and sound of a heavenly being of power. She thought about the angel's words and then proudly let her countenance be filled with confusion. Huh? And Gabriel had no choice but to carry on. Gabriel informed this very young, very oppressed, very unmarried Mary that she would conceive and bear a son who would be called the Son of the Most High God and would sit upon the throne of David, the greatest king who ever lived forever. Mary didn't fixate upon her position as one of the least of these in her society and laugh in the angel's face upon hearing his majestic proclamations. She simply asked about the mechanics of his claim. She said, how can this be, since I do not know a man sexually? And when Gabriel explained that the very Holy Spirit of God, the same divine force that hovered over the chaotic waters at creation, would hover over her and create the incarnation of God within her, she boldly stood there and spoke the formula of the great prophets Isaiah and Samuel, Here I am, Lord. You see, Mary was not constrained by the strictures of her societal position, a young person in a society run by elders, a woman in a society run by men, a Palestinian Jew in a society run by the Roman Empire, a poor person in a society run by the wealthy, a pregnant, unmarried person in a society run by laws of purity. She was not intimidated by the possibility of all of these forces of power and privilege coming crashing down upon her body, her mind, and her spirit. She was not made inert by any internalized sense of inadequacy. She looked within herself and saw that she was strong, that she was worthy, that she was enough. And she looked out at the world that surrounded her and saw that the world didn't need just any Messiah. The world needed a Messiah raised by her. As soon as the angel Gabriel left, Mary departed from her home in Nazareth in Galilee and made haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. 
We learned all about that joyful encounter last week. But this week we get more context. You see that heavenly being of power had mentioned to Mary that her cousin Elizabeth was six months pregnant, also by a miracle of the Holy Spirit. So Mary went for confirmation, affirmation, and wisdom from the only other person on the planet who could possibly understand what she was going through. And when Elizabeth shared that her child was jumping with joy, she spoke a blessing upon her very young cousin. She said, Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Elizabeth named it exactly. Mary believed in herself and in the God who made covenants with her people. Mary believed that this same God would fulfill the promise of the Messiah, the promise of the salvation of the world through her and through the child she now carried. With this blessing from her older, wiser, miracle-filled cousin, Mary spoke the words that would cause the world to turn. The words that would foretell just what kind of a Messiah she would raise. Just what kind of a salvation the world had in store. The words that show just how powerful Mary was. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is His name. His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. She spoke these words that would cause the world to turn to Elizabeth, who carried the prophet of the way. She spoke these words to John, who would carry the mantle of Elijah. She spoke these words to Jesus, who would carry the full weight of God and the full weight of humanity in his very identity. These three were her audience, and together the four of them, two mothers and two sons, would see to it that her prophecy would be fulfilled. For her prophecy had to be fulfilled. 
for it was the prophecy of the enactment of love, the prophecy of the incarnation of the God who is love, the God who chose to enter the world through somebody who had none of the power society had to offer, through somebody who had all of the power of mind, spirit, and body to shake the world to its foundations. Mary would go on to give birth to and raise a child whom she would love with the fullness of her heart and the fullness of her energy. She would hold him and nurse him and sing to him and dance with him and soothe him and protect him for a life that would be brilliant beyond all measure. She would encourage him and challenge him and teach him and prepare him for a life that would be brutal beyond all measure. She would deal with his attitudes and pushback and process of differentiation. She would be by his side when he needed her to be right there, and she would watch from afar when he needed her to be there but couldn't quite admit it. She would remind him that he was human. She would remind him that he was divine. She would do everything in her power to make sure he lived. She would do everything in her power to make sure he thrived. She would nudge and guide and urge him. But she would not coerce or force or control him. And so, in the fullness of love, she would allow Jesus to make his own decisions, to determine his own fate, much as our mother God does for us. And so she would stay up late at night and worry and fear and grieve. Yes, she would embody the love of a mother. But her love would not be limited to her son. As her words of prophecy made clear, she would also love her people. She would love the lowly, the poor, the hungry, she would love the least and the lost. She would love with the boldness of a Hebrew prophet speaking truth to power. She would love with the fierceness of a Palestinian woman standing up to an empire stacked against her. She would love with the strength of a warrior she would love with the resilience of a survivor. She would love with the tenderness of a mother. She would love like my grandmothers. She would love like your grandmothers. She would love like my mom. She would love like your moms. And she's still there, interceding for the world, interceding for the children of God, interceding for her children. And so, she is our mother. She is the embodiment of 
all mothers. Yes, we should honor her. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostrae. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our Mother, we come to you in prayer this day for a world desperately wanting love. For what the world needs now is love, sweet love. We pray that we ourselves may be bearers of the light of your love to all, that we may be incarnations of your love. And we pray for those most in need of feeling your love this day. We pray for communities across the world plagued by violence, by the violence of constant warfare, by domestic violence, by violence perpetrated by the guns and other weapons that we support with our finances and with our politics. For those who are suffering violence against themselves, 
for those surviving systemic violence, especially in a time in which the economy and healthcare systems continue to crash. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have no place to call home but the places outside. We pray for those who are experiencing homelessness as the weather starts to get cold in this country. We pray for those who are on the verge of homelessness because of the end of moratoriums on paying rent and evictions. We pray for those who have been displaced by their homes and are forced to be refugees and migrants stopped at border walls and reviled by countries that should welcome them. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church and for all worshiping bodies who are trying to give you glory and feel the benefits of the presence of holy community while being physically separated during this pandemic. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are offering care. We pray for those who are lonely. We pray for those who are offering comfort. We pray for those who are dying. We pray for those who are offering the embrace of grief. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this community, for this congregation, for our families, for our loved ones. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, let us join our hearts and voices with the faithful across a world that is about to turn, praying the words that our Lord Jesus taught us in whatever language is nearest and dearest to our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
listen now to the offertory invitation. Mary declared that the Lord has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Let us give of our riches so that the hungry might be filled and Mary's vision might be fulfilled. I encourage you to mail in checks or take advantage of our online giving options through the website. Now let us take a moment to reflect on stewardship. you sent your son to be born of Mary. In their love, mother and child worked for the transformation of the world. We dedicate this offering to you with a commitment to seek transformation through love. In the name of Jesus Christ, the incarnation of love, we pray. Amen. Loved ones, as we enter into this final week of Advent, our observance of expectant hope, when we prepare our hearts and minds and bodies and the world for the coming of the source of hope, the Prince of Peace, the giver of joy, the incarnation of love, May we remember his mother, Mary, who prophesied, who stood up to an empire, who trusted herself, who loved her child, who loved the world, who loved us. And so may we be like her, and may we be loved for the world. We stay in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. I love you. Amen. <laughs>